let me provide you some expectations of what you will be learning during this e-course and masterclass. You'll be learning how to create that SharePoint case management solution, how to build up that case management solution into what you need to see and how you need it to function. How do you want email to function? How do you want calendar to function? How are you going to set up your calendar and your document library? We're gonna show you how to do all of that in this case management masterclass. We'll also show you how to set up your notebook, your planner, and how to scale all these things with the use of teams and lists and templates. I'll also show you two tutorials on how to use Microsoft Forms both internally and externally and how to build a communication site that wraps everything together and puts it into one site for your entire organization to use. And of course, last but not least, I will provide to you my timekeeping and billing solution for the Microsoft 365 case management system. It took us a while to partner with a solution that we felt was just as effective and didn't require you to navigate out of the environment. We found all of those solutions and more with an amazing company. So without further ado, let's get started. Anybody who has a Microsoft 365 subscription and has gone into SharePoint to create that team site knows that this right here is what Microsoft gives us right out of the box. Anybody can go and create that SharePoint site after they get their Microsoft 365 subscription, choose the right plan for them by simply going into SharePoint, create a site, choose a team site, give it a site name, give it an email, and there you go. So this is what Microsoft gives us, which on its surface I suppose is fine, but in order for us to leverage this as a true case management system, we're gonna to have to make some modifications. And when we make those modifications, we transform our environments all on our own and we design the case management system that we always needed. So let's take a look at what we can build when we start to design our own case management systems using the Microsoft 365 case management system that we've designed for you. And we've designed an entire e-course based around it, which you can now get on the Thinkific platform. So let's take a look at those modifications. So this is just one version of looking at a home screen and a SharePoint site that I designed with my masterclass students. Now what we're looking at here is just one design of a case management system, but you design the case management system that you want. This is just one way that we did it in the masterclass, which was a precursor to launching that e-course. So let's take a quick tour of this homepage. So I'm going to list my case name right up here at the very top, which I've got masterclass version two here since this was our second time holding this masterclass. Then I've got a section here for quick links. And let's talk about quick links for a moment and what quick links can do for you right here on this homepage. We actually have two ways of looking at quick links on the SharePoint site homepage. Quick links right here and right here on our navigation menu right here on the left, which is what that is called the navigation menu. These are actually just quick links as well. So let's talk about the difference real quick. The navigation quick links are what I use to navigate throughout the SharePoint site and to navigate outside of the organization for something that is used across the organization, meaning no matter what SharePoint site you're in, you might need it. Um, could that be your QuickBooks or your other timekeeping and billing solution? Could that be Google, which is what we've got right here now? When it comes to the quick links right here on the home page, I really like to save those to things that are very specific to this SharePoint site. Is it a judges page? Is it 
a clerk's page or a courthouse's page? Is it your e-filing platform for that specific jurisdiction? Is it PACER? Whatever it is, if it's specific to that case, then bring it in as a quick link. And that's something that I show you how to do in that e-course. So coming down and taking um, a bigger tour here, we've got case contacts, which case contacts is handled in a couple of ways in the Microsoft 365 case management system. But right here, this is an organization wide contact that's available to my entire team. And I brought it through to the SharePoint site. And so there is a lot that is stored in these cards. And if I click show more here, it'll show me more of what is stored. And if I hover over this right here, I've got a little icon that appears to copy this email so I can quickly copy and paste it into another email. Or maybe I can just quickly send an email to this person that's a contact on this SharePoint site. So if I go into show more, it's really going to expand that card, allow me to edit this contact even further, add my own notes, and even look at any files that I've exchanged with that person and LinkedIn. This is something that Microsoft has done because a lot of us professionals are out there on the LinkedIn platform, that's where we're having, you know, a lot of conversations and exchanging some really good content. And so there's a way for you to bring that sort of information in. Going back to our homepage, we have our case calendar. So every SharePoint site has its own calendar. And I know what you're thinking. There are going to be so many calendars for me to keep up with if every single one of my cases and every single one of my SharePoint sites has its own calendar. But I assure you, it is not that difficult. And we're going to take a deeper dive into that later on in this demonstration here. And certainly, we learn how to incorporate the case calendar and how to build your case calendar up and make sure that all of those events get tagged into your SharePoint site. All right, scrolling down even further, we've got activity. And this is just the recent activity that's come into the SharePoint site. And you see one of these items here is the SharePoint checklist because that is one of the handouts that we give during the e-course. So you can have a starting jump off point of how to get all of these items here and how to get all of these items in here. So coming over here, we've got documents, and this is a dedicated document library for this SharePoint site. It is actually being powered by OneDrive. Um, you're not gonna see that term. You're not gonna see OneDrive's name anywhere in your SharePoint site. That is just sort of running in the background. But the point of, of OneDrive um, is for you to have really two environments within OneDrive. You have a singular environment that is personal and yours, um, your, and yours alone, and you do not have to share that or you can choose to share your OneDrive if you'd like. But all of the SharePoint sites and their document libraries that come with the SharePoint sites are being powered by OneDrive and they're simply shared OneDrives. They're shared document libraries. That's what we're talking about here, SharePoint. That's the actual point to share. So we'll take a deeper dive into documents here in a little bit. And during the e-course, I show you how to implement automation with your document library so that everybody in your team always stays in the know about what is going on in those document libraries. Who is saving what and when are they saving it? And do you need to do anything about it? Is that a trigger for you to do something next? The automation alerts that we can set up in the document libraries are amazing and they're great time savers because let's face it, we're far too busy as it is. Um, and so when we can set up those alerts and that automation, that just makes our job so much easier. So this is truly streamlining at its finest. So scrolling down even further, I've got case tasks here. And actually, this is just a title um, that I've modified because I've brought in planner 
right in here on my homepage. I can take a deep dive into planner and I can really plan out everything that I need as far as my tasks for my team are concerned because that's why we're using planner. Um, and if you know, you want some more information on planner, I do have a video on that. I'll post it somewhere in here, but Planner is a great way to manage your team tasks and to delegate without having to micromanage. So what I've done is I brought it here on the home screen, which I teach you how to do in that e-course, and we can easily add those tasks on right here, or we can go into Planner and add those tasks in there. So that is a basic home screen right there for the case management system. And I've got to tell you, this is just a basic home screen. Guys, this is builder grade right here. So think about the ways that you can use the applications within Microsoft 365, how you can execute them to work to your advantage to build the case management system that you truly need and that ultimately you'll truly use. So you'll notice at the top of the screen, there's search this site. That is because your entire database in Microsoft 365 is searchable. So the more data you pour into it, the more searchable it becomes. Now search this site is just searching this site. You have the ability to search SharePoint in your entire environment because SharePoint has its own section right here on top saying to search your SharePoint environment. So you can search all of them or you can search one of them. So that's really great because we don't want to reinvent the wheel if we don't have to. We've already filed a motion to compel and argued the very same thing in another case two years ago. Great. Let's search for that motion to compel, bring it back, save it as a new version, and change it accordingly. We don't have to reinvent the wheel because it's already part of our searchable database. Something else that you'll notice up here is we've got a following, and that is because SharePoint sites almost work like social media. You need to be following the SharePoint sites in order for them to be top of feed. It's like following somebody on social media. So if you're not working on the case, if it's not a hot and heavy case, then don't follow it. So you're not receiving any notifications about it. But if you are working on it, if it's something that's going to trial, you have to make sure to follow that SharePoint site so it stays top of your feed and top of your mind. As you can see, this site has two members because we don't have to invite everybody in our firm to our SharePoint sites, to our cases. Now, while you may want to, and while that may sound like something that you need to do, sometimes we need to make SharePoint sites and cases private. Is there a conflict? Um, did somebody come in from another firm and they previously worked on this case and we have to shield them from this case now? Or do you have another part of your firm that you work with in the same office but don't really work with on cases? All right, don't invite them to your cases. Your cases can be private to whoever is working on them. Something else that you'll notice is this edit button right here, and that's because everything that you see on this page, you can edit. You can take it out, you can bring more things in, and the things that you bring in, the items that you bring in here, these are called web parts, okay? That is very important. These are sections, and these items right here, these are web parts. So that's really important terminology for Microsoft 365. And we teach you the difference and how to do all these modifications in that e-course. So let's go over to this site section here in this navigation menu. Let's look at this navigation menu and let's see where it takes us because I've already modified this site during our masterclass and I've made all of these links and everything should function the way that it needs to. So let's take a look at conversations first. I'm just gonna go ahead and right click and open in a new tab for the sake of this demo because I don't wanna navigate off of my home page. 
So if I go into Outlook, it's going to bring me right in to that dedicated inbox for the SharePoint site. That SharePoint site is right here and everything about that SharePoint site is right there. So I can easily copy that email address should I need to. I could take a look at who is on this site, what applications are being used, and the emails that have been exchanged, and the files that came with those emails. Guys, I can't tell you how much of a time saver this is in looking at this. And if you take a look right up here, you'll see that there's this switch. This is follow in inbox. And this is kind of a switch that I have a love hate relationship because when we follow in inbox, we can truly be inundated with those notifications, but we don't have to be following in inbox. We can choose to look at that inbox when we want to, or we can be following it. It's completely up to us. And at any point in time, just like social media, we can unsubscribe. So that's a really significant thing in this case management system, the ability to unsubscribe from notifications and from cases. That's awesome. So going back into the dedicated inbox, let's take a look at some of these things that we've got going on. You know, I've got an email right here that had two documents attached to it. And down here, I once upon a time had something that said save to group library. There is a little gray wording right there that says save to group library. And I clicked on that. And in one click, it saved these to group library. And remember what that group library is. Let's take a look at that. So this is a quick way to navigate back to the site, navigate to the planner or navigate to the notebook. But let's take a look at the document library. If I go into document library and look in documents, I have a folder called email attachments. That folder appears whenever I have an attachment to any of my emails. And when I save to group library with one click of a button, regardless if it is one attachment or 50 attachments, all of my attachments go right in here into email attachments. And remember I talked earlier about those alerts. And so you could set up an alert in the email attachments folder to perhaps go to a secretary or a receptionist or a file clerk. And that would prompt that person to go into this email attachments folder for the SharePoint site for your case and to file those documents away digitally because we're no longer working with paper. Now we've got digital files. You can easily do that by highlighting the item and click move to and move it into any of your other SharePoint sites. So going back to Outlook, this is a really great way of managing things very well within the SharePoint site. Because I have a SharePoint site with a dedicated email address, I'm able to easily drive the traffic directly where it needs to go so I can manage the emails and the file attachments on a matter level. Ultimately, with any case management system, that's what you want to do. That is your goal. Work with Clio, work with Smokeball, any of them. It, you are provided the same thing those systems provide you within SharePoint. Drive that email to a specific point and manage it from there. So closing my Outlook, closing the demo site, and going back to my home screen that's conversations, you know, pretty much in a nutshell. I can send an email at any point in time from Masterclass by clicking right up here and send an email. And it brought up my email application. Now, if I wanted to, I could, you know, choose another one. Here I've got my Masterclass 2. So my master class two, I see that there's two people in that. There's Misty Murray and Zoe Moore. So those two people are going to receive an email of anything that goes to that SharePoint site. So what if opposing counsel doesn't remember to CC your paralegal? 
Either the attorney's responsible for sending it to their paralegal so the paralegal can manage whatever nonsense is in that email, or the attorney can take care of that email on his or her own self. However, if the paralegal is by default sent a copy of the email that is sent to the attorney because we've asked opposing counsel, hey, whenever you email us, we need you to use this email address because this is the distribution email address. This is where we need you to serve us. So as long as we're driving the traffic directly into where it needs to go, everybody's receiving a copy of that email. And the checks and balances of everybody receiving that copy of that email and everybody being in the know has been put into place. So what if opposing counsel doesn't send it to the SharePoint site and only sends it to the attorney? Then it is the attorney's responsibility to either click and drag it into the conversation for Masterclass or alternatively, you can forward that email to the SharePoint site. As soon as the email hits the SharePoint site, then that automation kicks in and everybody gets that alert. So going back into Outlook, what if I want to send an email directly from here? I can go ahead and click send email and it will bring it right over here into the web version of Outlook, which is what I really recommend that you use. If you wanna go ahead and use the desktop application, that's completely fine. Just make sure it's the Microsoft 365 one. No Outlook 2016 here. That is a different version of Outlook, guys. It will work with SharePoint, it will see it, but it doesn't quite function the same and you lose the ability to save to document library, which for a paralegal is hugely important because there are a lot of emails and a lot of file attachments to manage. So send an email to your SharePoint site and maybe you wanna send a memo to file and you want it to go to all of your team members. You could do that by typing in your memo to file in here and sending it as an email to all of your team members. Now for me, I like to set up a process. So as a paralegal, that process for me is once I receive that email from that attorney with the memo to file, I go ahead and I take that email and I send it to OneNote. And I put that attorney note and memo into a section into OneNote, which I'm gonna show you here in a little bit. But something that's really nifty here is we can click and drag this down to CC or we can click and drag this down to BCC. Maybe I wanna send something to opposing counsel, um, but I don't want them to see my SharePoint site email address. And that's okay, I've got law firms that do that, and that's why we have that BCC. We can still direct that traffic where we need it to go, and nobody is the wiser for it. Nobody's gonna see that BCC. So those are just a few ways that you can use Outlook in the Microsoft 365 environment. But the fact that it gives us this dedicated environment for all of those emails, it makes it really efficient for when we need to go back and take a look at any one of those emails or any one of those file attachments that came with all of those emails. Let's go back to the homepage of that masterclass and take a look at calendar. So remember we have that dedicated calendar and when I click on that calendar, what it does is it puts a check right here in this group. So I can easily now calendar an event right here by clicking new event and bringing down calendar and choosing masterclass. So this is what allows me to calendar on the SharePoint site. And we really take a deep dive into calendaring into the e-course because I gotta say, there's so many different ways that you can calendar. There's a couple of different nuances of this system that you kinda gotta know. Um, and that's something that we teach in the Microsoft 365 Case Management System e-course. So we are able to easily calendar events and tag SharePoint sites. And again, at its core, no matter what case management system you use, you're doing the same thing. You are tagging environments and cases and matters, if you will, to events on your calendar. Microsoft 365 does the same thing using 
Outlook. And Outlook comes through on our SharePoint site in many ways. We use it in conversations, which is your email. We use it in calendar, which I just showed you. And we use it with people. We use it with case contacts because ultimately, once the case contacts come onto your user profile, which is something I explained in the e-course, then you have added it to your contacts and it's part of your people. And that is something that's located right down here. This part right here, this is people. This is your contacts. And this is what makes it possible to bring through contacts to the home page of the SharePoint site. So documents and document library, I did talk to you a little bit about that already. And I talked to you about some of the alerts that you can set up in this email attachments folder. And this general folder right here actually belongs to Teams. So I'll talk about Teams here in a little bit, but build that folder structure out here. And if you need to create something new, you can do that directly from SharePoint. The moment that it is in SharePoint, it becomes available to your entire organization. And again, if you've got a folder that you set up an alert on, when you've created that document, your people are going to be in the know because you're going to alert them about it through the automation. You'll see down here that you have add template because lots of us are using the same forms over and over and over again. So why do we reinvent the wheel? We don't have to. We can bring it in as a template form and use it regardless of where we are in SharePoint and no matter what case we're in, we can bring those bad boys in. So another amazing feature that I get the yays and hoorays and hurrahs on is this sync button right here. Because when we sync it to our local machine, we are syncing this document library from this SharePoint site to our local machine. And all of those documents are now available to us on our local machines. And they are still existing in SharePoint. It is just a tunnel to those documents. Now I explained that in the e-course about the difference between when it is solely in SharePoint and when it changes and, and the document starts to exist, not only in SharePoint, but on your hard drive as well, taking up space and what to do about it when those documents are taking up too much space. So there's lots to talk about in document library and you see a couple of other options up here, um, including automate and power apps and automate. We sort of talk about this is power automate right here. We sort of talk about that a little bit in the e-course, but to be honest with you, there could be an e-course designed solely using power automate because let's face it, it's that powerful. So going back to the home page of the SharePoint site, remember that this SharePoint site is available to you across the board. And thus, you wanna optimize each and every SharePoint site across the board. Now, what do I mean by optimizing it? I mean that often a lot of us have these links, these bookmarks up at the top of each one of our search engines and top of our browsers that direct us to where we want to go very quickly and very easily, which that's awesome. That's completely fine when you're sitting in front of your computer, whether or not that be a laptop or a desktop. When you're sitting in front of the computer, those bookmarks are great. But what if you're using your phone? What if you're using your tablet? You don't have those bookmarks available to you as easy anymore. And so that's why you want to bring in those quick links because optimizing yourself across the board like that and bringing in everything from the office into your SharePoint environment, into your Microsoft 365 case management system, regardless of what it is inside or outside your organization, you're optimizing yourself across the board and you're making yourself just as productive outside of the office as you would have been inside of the office. And everybody can certainly appreciate that now that we're living in this pandemic. So going back to the homepage, let's take a look at Notebook. 
Now, Notebook is something that we got from the default site. In fact, conversations, documents, notebook, site contents, recycle bin, and edit are something that you get right out of the box in that default site from Microsoft. So you can see we have added on to that navigation menu and I guarantee you will add on to that navigation menu too once you find out how powerful this system is. So let's take a look at Notebook. Right click and open in a new tab. Notebook is amazing because I want to take your legal pad and put it into a notebook. We need to take all of the information that we learn about this case and put it into a centralized point for all of our team members to benefit from the information that has become known and available to us. So I do have a video solely based on using OneNote as a case management system because it is the one application that Microsoft will give you for free no matter what. You may have to go out there and download it, especially you Mac users, but if you got a Windows machine, then you probably have OneNote. So definitely explore that. But I like to keep all of my indexes in here. I like to keep all of my attorney notes and memos in here. And you can see down here, there's really this hierarchy of things. We've got section and page. So treat your notebooks like books. Section is for your chapters and pages are the pages within those chapters. So think about that for a moment. We talked about using SharePoint and how to build your SharePoint environment and the four different types of SharePoint sites that you could build within your case management system. So are you using this for a case? Then you can build this out um, to hold all of those indexes and to hold all of your notes and to hold all of your research. Or if you're using this for a client, then you have a section for that client and then a page for every single matter that you're handling for that client. Now I take a deeper dive into notebook and how to work with your notebook in the e-course um, and how you can use this with your case management system. But something that you should keep in mind is that everything that you put into your notebook is also part of your searchable database. Um, and that is wildly important to so many of us part of a searchable database. So I love notebook. I love using it. And you can see this button right here that says open in app. And that's great because it means I can do the same thing that I did with my document library. I can bring it on to my machine, it makes it available to me both online and offline. And that's how I toggle between each one of my notebooks is by bringing it in to my OneNote application on my local machine. Now, everything that I do in that notebook, regardless if it's online or on my local machine, it is available to all of my team members in real time. So going back to the home page of the SharePoint site, let me show you there's an easy way to do that by clicking right here. Just a quick peek into a little tip that I show you in the e-course. And so that will always navigate you back to your home page of your SharePoint site. So we can close that other home page and start working from here. And again, we've got Planner. Now I take a deep dive into Planner in the e-course, but I also have that other video that I did on Planner. So I will show it across the screen here. But Planner, again, is a really great way to delegate and assign those tasks um, while you go and do anything else that it is that you need to go and do. Okay, one of the last applications that we're going to go through in this demo is Teams. And I love Teams because I love taking our conversations out of the clutter of our inbox and into organized conversations as part of the Teams. So we've got this master class right here, and there's that general channel that I was talking about because we saw that folder in the document library. So any files that we exchange here is gonna go into that general folder into that document library. We can easily start new conversations right down here into this general channel. 
you can create more channels and you can create channels solely based on team members that you're working with on a specific task. I do truly love Teams. Um, I love using it on my phone, on my tablet, on my desktop. It doesn't matter. It's kind of like text messaging, um, but I'm having very, very organized text messages that is a part of all of my cases. So we can exchange files using this, uh, send an emoji if we want to, and um, even go into Microsoft Stream and truly have this live webinar experience to connect Microsoft Stream and Microsoft Teams. Say that fast five times. Up here, we show files in Wiki, so you can bring your files in from your document library, and Wiki is just Teams' way of saying OneNote. Now, it's not the same thing. It's not the same document. It's a completely separate document, and they don't talk to one another. So this is just a really quick way for you to add in notes into your team. Maybe you're in a video conference and you just wanna add a quick note or something. You can do that right in here, right when you're in Teams, and then maybe bring it over to your OneNote in your um, SharePoint environment if you want to. We have this plus button right here because you can add things into your environment. Maybe you wanna go ahead and add a tab for Word. Um, maybe you want to add a tab for stream or just bring in your OneNote notebook from SharePoint. You can do that. You don't have to use Wiki at all. You can remove it completely and just bring in your notebook. And then there's forms and lists. List is a huge one. It's new. It's big. And in some respects, it's replacing OneNote notebook uh, for housing indexes. So list is something that we talk about in the e-course. There's amazing things that you can do with your case management system using lists. I think about it. We're doing the same processes over and over again, and it would be nice if we have a list of those processes that we have to do, and we can bring them into SharePoint site environments, and everybody can just hit the ground running. Nobody knows what to do next because there's a list of things that already exist that you need to do. So these are some great items to explore here, and these are all of the things that are part of the Microsoft 365 environment. And down here, we have more tabs for things that are outside of the Microsoft 365 environment. Perhaps you want to bring in Asana because you're using that as a productivity tool and you're not using Planner. You've chosen to use Asana instead. You can bring that into your Teams environment and heck, you can bring it into your SharePoint environment on your home page, replacing Planner. There are lots of things that you can do with this system. You are not confined to just working with the Microsoft 365 applications. You can bring in things outside of the Microsoft environment. And in fact, I do. Timekeeping and billing is one of them. It's something that I talk about in the e-course because it's kind of been a hush-hush secret, but we have finally partnered with somebody for timekeeping and billing that does integrate with Microsoft 365. It's not part of the environment, but it integrates. And it integrates with Outlook, which is where a lot of us live. So we can turn those emails and we can turn those calendar events into trackable, billable time. So Teams is also really great because you can open up this chat function right here and start having a private chat with any one of your team members. Um, so this is great, kind of like the messaging I was talking about earlier, but you can have this really organized sort of text messaging with your team. You can see a calendar right here, and this will allow you to kind of take a good bird's eye view of your calendar and when you can schedule a Teams meeting, or you can meet right now and just direct dial any one of your team members. And speaking of direct dial, we've got calls right here, so you can call any one of your team members. And depending on the plan that you have, you can even use this 
as a standalone telephone system. I have an enterprise plan. I have one of the largest enterprise plans and I use Microsoft Teams as my telephone and video conferencing center exclusively. I do not have a landline. Um, I do have a cell phone, but my clients do not have that number. So I love Microsoft Teams. I use it a lot. And of course, just like your SharePoint environment, had we've got this navigation menu right here you've got the ellipses right here that you'll see everywhere throughout the microsoft environment and you can bring in other things in here maybe you can bring in shifts or you want to bring in planner or you want to bring in OneNote right here on that navigation menu just for your team notebook or something like that then you can do that right here in teams so I encourage you to really explore Teams if you haven't already. Um, usually my clients are baby stepping into Teams because they start with SharePoint um, and then they start to scale into Teams. So closing Teams and going back into the homepage for SharePoint site, we've got a quick link right here for Google. So let's right click and open in a new tab and maybe that was that courthouse website instead. So it's gonna direct me right where I need to go and we show you how to put those quick links on right in the e-course. So something else we teach in the e-course is how to build a team communication site. You guys need a communication site for your team because you need something to track your open and active cases and have a menu of those open SharePoint sites. Maybe you have 200 cases and let's face it, that's a lot of SharePoint sites to keep track of. So let's have a menu that brings us these quick links and navigates us to where we need to go. So this quick link right here would navigate me right into the SharePoint site. This would navigate me right into the dedicated inbox for SharePoint. And maybe I've got a section right here for notes and what sort of case the SharePoint site is. Personal injury, pre-litigation. You can see that I've also brought in quick links right here because we have these sites outside of our organization that everybody needs access to. And I want to bring them in here to that team communication site. We've also got a document library within the team communication site. And let me say the difference really quick right here. The difference between a team site and a communication site is the fact that a communication site doesn't have a dedicated email address. We don't need it. It's just our team site. But I spend every day on my team site, every day, all day, because this is how I toggle between all of my open and active cases. So the document library here in your team communication site is really for all your forms, your templates, your folder structure, and everything else that you need to bring into each and every SharePoint site that you open from here on out. Remember, we don't want to reinvent the wheel, and if we don't have to, and we know where it exists in the system, or even if we didn't, we could search it. But if we know where it exists in the system, then we can easily copy it to any other SharePoint site we need. Are you ready for a case management solution that doesn't cost you thousands and doesn't require you to change the way that you practice law or work with your team? Hi, I'm Misty Murray and I understand the painstaking task of case management, which is why I've come up with a solution. Introducing the Microsoft 365 Case Management System, a system designed for attorneys and paralegals who want to harness the power of Microsoft 365 and leverage it as a case management system. I've helped thousands of law firms, paralegals, attorneys, and more with my coaching sessions, live webinars and YouTube channel. And today I'm releasing the full masterclass for the Microsoft 365 case management system. This is a step-by-step -step, in depth, hands-on tutorial where I take you through the entire course of how to design, build, and maintain your own case management solution. The Microsoft 365 case management system is effective, it's powerful, it's secure, it's mobile, and thus it is designed to help law firms, attorneys, and paralegals be their most productive self, regardless of where they are and what device they're using. 
In fact, the Microsoft 365 case management system has almost every bell and whistle you will see in any other legal case management system. However, it's for a fraction of the cost. But to just name a few of the solutions that the Microsoft 365 case management system has, here are a few. We've got email management, calendar management, document management, team task management, individual task management, messaging platform, video streaming platform, a marketing and blogging platform, a survey and forms management system, a list management, automation, timekeeping and billing, invoicing, and more. Through the use of over 100 minutes of video tutorials, guided checklists, and infographics, I'll teach you how to implement a more cost-effective and streamlined case management solution by leveraging the power of Microsoft 365 and using the applications from a company you already know and trust. I've walked your walk and I understand the foundational tools that are required to build a case management solution, which is why I've designed this master course to help you leverage a product that you probably already have and use it as a case management system. I'm not here to sell you a product that you don't need. You already purchased the product. I'm here to teach you how to transform that product into something that could serve as the catalyst to change your life. If you're ready to start building a sustainable, long-term, efficient, secure, and mobile case management solution that doesn't just work for you, but that grows with you, then start today with a Microsoft 365 Case Management System Masterclass. I'll leave a link in the description box below, or you can head over to aeroconsultants.solutions and sign up there. Our e-course is offered on the Thinkific platform, and we can't wait to see you there. I'll see you in class.